shall we? Be out first, man, and then <laughs> let us decide whether we want to see your universe. But by that time, Ben Affleck will probably be in the building. And I don't know, homie. As far as I'm concerned, I'm Batfleck forever. So <laughs> where he goes, I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to get... Listen, I, I, I love Ben. I think he's he's my probably my favorite overall portrayal of Batman of all time. But I, I love Batman so much, I'm going to go see right. Right. whatever it's, else That's fine. Do. Look, I'm not going to not watch Robert. I'm going to watch Robert. I'm going to be at the thing and be like... Mm, hey, he doesn't walk like Ben. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> I'm, gonna I'm, gonna them, I'm gonna let them go. Yeah, you know, like. I mean, shit. Oh, um, Christian Bale was a great Bruce Wayne. Great Bruce Wayne. I love, I love the style, the way he, you know. The, 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 but when he got into the bat suit, I'm like, damn, the camera angles they ain't letting him rock a little bit. I, I then he got the uh, the hockey mat, and then the, then he did the the Oh, swear to me, you know all of that. Not it took a little getting used to, but I figured we wasn't getting no more Batman. So I said, all right, I'm gonna ride with it. Sure, not a problem. Hey, you want to ride on my bike? <laughs> <laughs> But you got my secret identity. (laughs) (laughs) But you gotta love it though. You gotta love it. At the very least, when Ben Affleck came into the building, you saw a Batman that you were supposed to see on the screen. The other thing that makes me think this Gotham PD show is not that huge a deal, in all honesty, and maybe might never see the light of day, is they didn't save the announcement for DC fandom. Mm. We're, oh. we're, a, we're a month away from that, basically, Good a month point. and a half. That's a and, great point. I ain't even thinking you know, about that. They threw that out and just went, oh, yeah, there's going to be a Gotham PD show. But we've got this massive DC event coming up where we're going to have Secret Movie 1, Secret Movie 2, all yeah. these announcements. But here's this Gotham show that, eh, whatever. So that's where mm. I kind of think, like, eh, maybe it sees the light of day if the movie does well. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe they're judging how excited people would be about it because, like I say, you've got an event and you just threw this out there on a Tuesday. Right. Into I, I the agree with that. I, that, that, makes, that makes sense because, you know, when whenever they announced their slate, DC anyway, at Comic-Con back in, what was it, like 2014 or something like that? Back whenever they released their slate, mm-hmm. they they said like we're doing all these things and then all the crap happened behind the scenes with warner brothers and then it didn't happen right the cyborg movie didn't happen a bunch of other things didn't happen and you know cyborg was supposed to happen this year right and you know there was a slate that they announced and so i think they're trying to avoid that mistake of building hype for things before it gets like to the point like too big to where like all of a sudden they they look like idiots for announcing it so that would make sense as to why they like kind of off the side like like here you go this might happen um but yeah it's you're right, uh, Scotty. That does kind of show a little bit of lack of faith in it, or not necessarily lack of faith, but like lack in um, confidence. And well, I did see on Twitter a lot of people. Well, not a lot of people, but like I said, a few people was actually like, "Oh, okay, yeah, let's see what's going on. Let's see what happens." So people, I mean, people have their various of opinions and stuff. But then there right. was people like us that said, "Wait a minute, we already had Gotham. What are y'all doing?" <laughs> that don't make no damn sense. Yeah. And as long as they don't turn it into the Gotham show where basically the writers were given every episode of a Batman or every issue of a Batman comic ever. And they were just like, oh, shit, throw that in. Throw that in. Right. Throw that in. As long as this Gotham show gives maybe a better back hell than one I made in my own garage, unlike the other <laughs> Gotham show did. Like, come on. Just send that to Matt Reeves now for the well, Gotham show. You might not fit <laughs> uh, Batman in the show because, I mean... I guess HBO has a bigger budget, but like you know, if like Robert Pattinson's more like of a movie actor, it might be harder to get him to do. Yeah, that's another thing that bugs me because like if you're if you're gonna do doing a prequel and stuff, because like the Batman's supposed to take place in like Batman's like second year, yeah. so like if you <laughs> Robert Pattinson's not the kind of guy that do a cameo in a show, I just don't see him as being that guy. You know, I don't know enough about Robert Pattinson to make any accurate assessment other than the fact he was in Twilight. And that's just my you know, guess. You know, I just see that that, that, guy that, was... that stigma is always going to be. But people who have been saying he's been tearing it up in the indie circuits. He's been right. doing this thing. And I said, OK, well, that's fine. That established him as a avant-garde actor. But I don't look for that. You got to You got to really impress me, man. I don't see enough for you to know that I'm impressed just because they cast you as Batman. And. Like I said, Christian Bale, you know, Michael Keaton, 
Shit, even George Clooney's whack ass was cast as Batman. Even he had a little buzz on TV. So come on, man, which is it? I don't see nothing about uh, enough about Robert Pattinson to make me say this is the ideal Batman for me. Now with in Matt Reeves' hands. He could pretty much can blow it out the box. So I'm not discounting Matt Reeves' talent as a filmmaker. Shit, we got three badass Planet of the Planet of the Apes films behind that. And I and that's the only reason I said, okay, let me see what he got. But, but I'm think, not putting my cart before the horse. I think the lines have blurred now, though. I think we kind of have to stop thinking of, like, TV being lesser. I mean, because right. when you look at the money that Apple and HBO and Netflix are throwing at actors to get them to be on their streaming services and their streaming series and stuff like that, I think it changes the landscape. Like, you know, mm-hmm. you look at, you know, uh, HBO, not even the streaming service, but getting, like, Nicole Kidman and Reese with, like, you know, Jason Momoa is doing a show for Apple. And, and all these types of things so I think it changes the landscape so when we talk about Ben or Robert or any of these guys showing up and doing a TV show it's it's not the same old days where it was like oh that guy has to do a fucking TV show now because he can't talk <laughs> to the box office anymore it's like now it's like you just do Everything's you changed. know where the work is right. and, and right. who's going to pay you so I think it's very plausible to me that Ben Robert Gal Gadot, any of these guys or gals show up on a TV show uh, on a streaming service. Yeah. Right. I guess I'm uh, talking point. W, where that's like Walmart channel and you're not right. a big actor. Well, I guess you did get Ezra Miller in Crisis, so I should. Right. Yeah, and there, and there we and go. And that was right. a major high point. In the CW show, when you have both Grant Gustin and Ezra Miller in the mm-hmm. same scene, that the entire the entire internet exploded because of the possibilities you just gave us behind that. And the thing that most people, and maybe nobody on this panel, but the people that I talked to overlooked in that scene was that's how Ezra Miller figures out the name Flash. Right. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I know. Great point. I you know what I mean? Because like he's, he's like, you're a Flash. Oh, Flash. Oh, like that's that's a huge little point. Because he never, because he never called himself that in the Justice League movie or in his no. Suicide Squad cameo, he never called himself that. Nobody uh, called him that. And then he has that moment with Grant Gustin, like, "Oh, Flash! Oh, that's shit! That's sweet! I'm stealing that!" <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, he kind of has that moment. So it's like that's a huge moment going forward in the DCEU film series. And that pretty much set up the whole multiverse again, because even though they went through their little multiverse, you just put the movie flash into it that validates what I guess the the thinking going forward for AT&T because at that time that wasn't even too long probably before AT&T what was that that was at the beginning of this year probably yeah I mean that we had that, that what that did and what Warner Brothers is doing now with bringing Keaton back and stuff like that everything they've done is part of the DCEU now the DCEU is no longer just the four or five films that have been out there. Like right. having Michael Keaton come back puts 89 Batman, Batman Returns. That's DCEU. It's part of the multiverse. The TV shows are part of everything counts now. In the which, crisis of Infinite Earths, when they Christ, started it off, it started off Earth 89. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, and, it and makes I, perfect and I, sense. And, and I said it. I think you may have been been gone there or something. But I like I. That's where we're leading in my mind. Mm, yes, that three, I don't have a problem with that. Three, four, I don't have a problem at all. We are going to have a crisis movie if everything goes as planned. I mean, if obviously if the bottom right. falls out of everything, then you know. But I can see it, and that's their billion dollar movie. But you know what? Yeah, yeah like the Avengers Endgame. But at right. the same time. They know that they can only do but so much in in the little time because, like I said, not everybody is 25, 26 years old, and nobody's not going to do a 10 movie stretch just to get to that crisis point. So people's people's careers have you know been segued to certain other films and other franchises. Look at Henry Cavill; he got another franchise on his hand with The Witcher, so he he's going to pursue that because that's putting him on the map even more. But oh, I mean, that's fight. If I got paid to be Batman for 10 years, I'd drop everything else that I was doing. I, mean, <laughs> I, I totally agree with you. Oh, my God. I, I totally agree. agree. I've never understood these guys. They're like, I want to do something else. I'm typecast. <laughs> Fuck you. I'm going to put you in this suit, and you're going to have to pry me out of this thing. Yeah, right? coronavi- yeah. coronavirus basically is, how should we say, limiting your options. Yeah. you got to get what you can get when you can get it. But the beauty of Crisis and the beauty of the multiverse, and they do this in the comics whenever they do a Crisis event, is they cherry pick the stuff that's working 
and drop the stuff that isn't. So mm-hmm. if we get to a point where you know Cavill doesn't want to do Superman anymore, or, he's, or somebody's getting too old for their role, you bring in a younger one and you cherry pick them to go forward, and you mm-hmm. drop the older one, and that's just how Crisis has worked in DC Comics forever. Maybe that could right. be where Robert Pattinson's future may be, you know, going forward, and that's fine with me, but. Yep. Myself personally, I right now at this point, we waited three years <laughs> to finally see Zack Snyder's vision on screen, but we also waited three years to see how Ben Affleck's thing plays out. How Aquaman was supposed to play. Well, no, actually, shout out to James Wan because he that had the, he had the presence of mind to talk yeah. and meet with Zack Snyder to make their thing connect to Zack Snyder's Justice League. So yeah. kudos to uh, James Wan. But everybody else, even Patty Jenkins had problems with Wonder Woman with the studio with the no. So yeah, it's it, the whole thing was a shit show from the beginning. So now we're finally getting what we want. And if AT&T is smart, which I know they are, if they know that this Zack Snyder Justice League is going to explode, and it will, then the sky is the limit. They're just going to literally sit back and like, shit, this shit pays for itself. Zack, keep doing what you're doing. (laughs) We already made a billion dollars with Joker. Dark dark stuff is in now. Yeah, and the Avengers blew their load. They blew it all on Endgame. Ah, (laughs) All over your face. Him, Kate, Foggy, all of them. Now they ain't got nowhere to go. MCU is out. The DCEU is in. It took three years, but that's okay. Now we're going to be running the fandom for the next five, six, seven we years just behind. We hit them with quality. Yes. Like, yes. Like, that's quality. the thing. Like, and some of the big stuff, like Black Adam and stuff like that, has to kick ass. I think but, it will. Yeah. But, but once Zack Snyder's thing yeah. hits on HBO Max, the floodgates is going to open. Everything that... And, and, and Zack don't even need to do but so much because a lot of all of this was already planned. All we're doing is just... You know, restitching what was what was ripped open. We're we're fixing what they broke, and then from there y'all could do whatever. Black Adam, this one, that one. The best thing about how everything is panning out is that now you got people that actually trust their directors to do something because you're not gonna trust your director to give you subpar movies when you knew that it, as, as divisive as BVS was, it made over $800 million and that movie is still talked about after five years. The right. same movie. Do anybody talk about Civil War after five years? Do anybody talk about um, Avengers Age of Ultron? How about, how about your favorite and mine, Ant-Man and the Wasp? Does anybody talk about that? Nobody. But Batman v Superman? It's on everybody's lips to this day. Honestly, yeah. Ant-Man 1, I walked out of the theater and forgot what I had just watched. <laughs> <laughs> I had popcorn in my hand. I knew I went to a movie, but for the life of you, I could not tell you what it was. I was the man in, black sh- man in black showed up and just like, look at this light right here. Yeah. Uh, I, know Hugo, I know Hugo wanted to say something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought my best way I could try and answer your question, Dawson, about can we accept multiple Batman? Uh, I think this problem has gone back way before now that we've been preconditioned as humans to accept different versions of stories and then not accept them. We can't accept them happening at the same time, Mm. and yet we can. Uh, I I say this because I think it's also been preconditioned at one point because we believe we couldn't have a multiverse of anything. We couldn't have a shared universe at one point. Say, going back to the 40 series, you had uh, you had two Batman serials, and then you had Kirk Allen doing the Superman ones. And no one probably thought back then we could put these two together and make a big a big paycheck out of it. Mm-hmm. And then at the same time as that happening, so many years on, they uh, they only do sort of little teases like in Batman and Robin. With, this is why Superman works. Batman and Robin done right, though. <laughs> I don't know what happened. You do Batman and Robin. <laughs> Yeah, oh. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. The back credit card thing was just classic. Oh. It's a classic. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic. Oh, guys, I 
think the it's the car. Chicks dig the car. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was another classic line. <laughs> you should have seen old girl. Sorry, what was girl. her name? Uh, Kidman, Nicole Kidman. She was feeling up on his bat nipple. Val Chase Kimmel was, Yeah, Val Kimmel was like, ooh yeah. I freaking hate that character so much. I feel like I feel like Chase Meridian was like a poor man's Hugo Strange. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, and go ahead, Hugo. I think what I'm trying to say is that I, I believe this psychological conditioning that we've built up, or however it's been built up before, yeah. it, we have slowly started to break through it, yes. whether it be with the comic books, with Crisis, and setting up the multiverse in that, mm. and changing things, going into the next few decades. And even with the movies and the TV shows, they can happen at the same time now. Gotham, you have a Bruce Wayne who becomes Batman, while Ben Affleck is Batman. And even prior to that, Christian Bale, before, roughly before the show started, Christian, I think, was still in the role by the time it arises. Uh, the, this even goes back to Schumacher's films after Michael Keaton left with Tim Burton, when we had Val Kilmer, and then Val Kilmer did come back with Batman and Robin, so we had George Clooney instead, the real life Bruce Wayne. Uh, and then- <laughs> Bobblehead Bruce Wayne. The essence of uh, ushering the term of reboot with Batman Begins, with uh, Superman Returns, removing Superman 3 and 4 from the Christopher Reeves continuity, but don't get me started on that, that's a totally different discussion for me. <laughs> Brandon is a different Superman in my mind, I prefer to keep it that way. <laughs> what I'm saying is that through using different actors, through having TV shows and films happen at the same time, and you've also had comic books anyway, and novels, uh, prose novels, I mean. And video games. Creations of any character from any company, whether it be Batman, whether it be Sherlock Holmes, whether it be uh, even Moses from the Bible. We've had different actors and different filmmakers tell the stories. And slowly the preconditioning of saying we can only accept one version of these things is disappearing. And with Marvel and DC in their film divisions now talking about doing multiverse movies, or at least bringing in the idea of the multiverse to the screen. And this in part happens to help because of the CW's work and mm -hmm. what they're doing with the Arrowverse and bringing in Smallville as a reference for Crisis. And, oh, that was a brilliant thing too. And the Keaton, uh, Michael Keaton's Batman. And Batman 66. Uh, yeah, Batman 66, yeah. of course. Uh, the And the animated movies as well, where they continue these stories. We're not living in a world now where we can just accept one is the only version and the other version that came before it is now dead. These are still continuing thanks to people who are passionate about these stories and the yes, versions sir. of the world. And the, those who are accepting of the new ones but love the old ones all the same. Uh, and what we're saying about TV, I, I know the budget isn't always what it should be, what we want it to be, especially with CW, but at the same time, because of shows like Breaking Bad, with Game of Thrones, and somehow money being thrown in, we can afford big name actors to go in these TV shows, whether to be the lead, whether to be a guest star. Mm -hmm. like, we can't say this is impossible anymore. Uh, and and you can accept more than one character, one of the same character on, on the screen. If you can do it with Flash, with John Wesley's ship coming from the 90s show and then becoming uh, Jay Garrick in the, the Arrowverse Flash mm. show. And then you have Crisis with, uh, you have three Superman actors playing that character. They're not playing two different characters like Supergirl when you had Dean Cain come in and do his guest part. It was, no. it was more poetic, Hugo, that Brandon Roof came in and reprised the role. Yes. That's what really got... And it, 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 I, I, I told people a lot. You can say a lot of things about the CW, but one of the things that they know how to do so well is really bring you in to care about the characters to a, mm. to a real extent. Brandon Roof was the Adam. As soon as he put that Superman suit, that went right back to Superman Returns. And to be honest... He didn't do a half bad, a half bad job. He did a, a pretty good job considering what he was given to work with. Yeah, but no, that's my opinion. And the, no, no. I really love that because you got to see like Brandon Ralph played Adam and Superman in the same scene. 
and I love, and they were different characters. And but just, but just looking at his face, he looked like he really enjoyed doing that, and that's what really touched my heart. That he well, he, he used he that role. He he used the whole because he was emulating Christopher Reeves in that movie per se. And I guess the way he talked you go and speak. how he had him flying, you know, above the earth and he turned around, did exactly like what Christopher Reeves did. So that was a homage to him doing that. And that's what got me into it. And I said, yeah, that's what I like to see in a, in a multiverse. People respecting what came before it, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, people talk about comparing different actors to playing these iconic roles, whether it's Christopher Reeves saying everyone is the part of Christopher Reeves playing Superman, and then forgetting that George Reeves and Kirk Allen uh, mm -hmm. started that whole uh, ball on screen rolling. Uh, we can't be having that mindset anymore. We can say, yes, I prefer that character, that version that that actor played. But when you have you ever noticed now that in comic boards, since Ezra and Grant Gustin did that scene together, the crisis, uh, no one, very little people are saying now, I want Grant Gustin in the movies. I don't like Ezra Miller. There are people still saying that, and unfortunately, there is the footage that we did of him with that fan that we, we can't really go into. That's a different subject altogether. But people were trying to say, remove Ezra from the role. I want Grant Gustin. But even that's gone quiet now because people are still talking about that scene, but how mm -hmm. iconic it is. And they could do the same, especially with if we have that scene of Jeffrey Dean Morgan with Batman meeting with Ben Affleck. Oh, or, that would be a mind blower. Yeah. Like they have that, that heart to heart closure or even. Keaton's Especially how good actors those two guys are. I mean, could you imagine the emotion in that scene? Oh my gosh! This be may so be. I'll be crying into a uh, box <laughs> because I cry at all of Zach's DCEU films. I cry at Wonder Woman as well. It, it gets very emotional for my heart more than even more than an MCU movie. This but may that, be the the greatest <clears throat> recent human evolution is that we can accept more than one version of a character at one time right I, you know it seemed like for so long like hugo was saying like that we were locked in that was it and now we're open to it and it's it's opened the world of possibilities for us but this is the right time to do it now right because of how everything played out in the media behind the scenes now knowing that the floodgates is going to open they're bringing back the type of characters and actors that resonated with you whether you was a lot younger or you you in the in you in the right frame of mind to accept them for us michael keaton was you know part of our childhood in in some respects but the same could be said for christopher reeves we, unfortunately we don't have christopher reeves with us so michael keaton was uh, outside of him and linda carter was pretty much our 80s you know our 80s upbringing and you bringing that up to 2020 that's something we will gravitate to or automatically so yeah. you got that locked down now that's the older heads that's people in my age bracket hitting 50s and all of that so now you get the younger people to come in with the robert patterson thing all right that's my speed he's he's my age i didn't grow up with him but I, like i said i gravitated to him because i like his work you're going to get all types of people gravitating to our product but starting with this that's going to basically pave the way for everything else to come and people will eat it up they will eat it up and i'm so happy to be a part of this now because of the way of, of the way as you know all of you gentlemen have basically suggested if they're going to do a crisis of infinite, infinite earth for the big screen then get our uh, our beaks wet first and let us enjoy a couple of years of this and then knock it out the park right i'm and, all and for it and something that Hugo touched up on that I think was really uh, profound, and it's something I've been thinking about a lot lately, is the idea of comic books having different versions of characters, right? And different storylines happening at the same time, mm -hmm. and different uh, things that people appreciate. And especially with the slight decline in the comic book industry right now, as far as like comic book distributors and between companies and everything like that, 
a lot of things not looking so good, we might start to see that transition more into movies and TV shows. And that's exactly like Abu said, this is the perfect time for that. This is the perfect time for that transition to have all those different ideas of how the character is supposed to act and be go more onto the screens rather than on the page. You know, of course, we'll always love the comic books because comic books are, you know, amazing. They're part of our culture. They're part of our upbringing. But we're going to see more of that transition into the films. Yeah, exactly. Into the films. And it's going to be more widely accepted. At least I hope it is. And I, I really believe that it will. I'm At afraid to point. put this out there because somebody's going st- to somebody's going to steal it. But like even podcasting, you could right. go back to kind of the radio drama days of Superman and, and, you know, and that type of thing. And you could put them in audio stories if, we, you know, it, it, like that would work, too. Mm. Yeah. Superman mm-hmm. comes in to save the cat from the tree. Well done, <laughs> Superman. Meanwhile, back in the Hall of Justice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Well, they exist. You, yeah, you can get these radio shows that they did in the old days, and it should encourage us to continue doing them now. I think there's still a market for it. Well, shoot, okay. the Sandman coming out with their audio thing. Exactly. So yeah, exactly. They going they going they going to clean house with that. So yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be the beginning of a lot of uh, our radio pro- uh, uh, broadcasts behind this. And like I said, now you can use the comics as as just another medium. I mean, the we we are in a very very good place. I mean, the haters and the naysayers they always gonna complain and bitch and moan. I don't know why they just don't jump on the bandwagon. We we accept all others to jump on our, ba- our bandwagon. It's time, man. You ain't got to say you hate Marvel. You ain't got. You don't got to put away your cap, your Civil War box set, and your Infinity War. You know, uh, uh, Blu-ray. You don't have to put that away. Just it's come a with us. Nerds. Yeah, just come with us. Come with us. Just like they said, in time you could join us in the sun. Join us. It's not yeah. that bad. As a matter of fact, we want to try to bring you in in a way in which after three years or so where you really didn't understand what Zack Snyder was trying to do, now you're going to get the full picture. And, and you know, and, and Sean O'Connell, he's going to have his book out detailing the journey. You're all going to understand that what we did for the past two and a half years was not a fluke. We was dedicated to seeing this man's vision come to light because we knew he had something of, of special that was there that needed to be seen and a lot of us couldn't get not a lot of us and some of us couldn't get behind it because we were so wrapped up in Marvel and how the Thanos thing was going to okay fine but you got what you wanted it's over now come with us and see what we can pro- provide for you and it, trust me the way things are shaping up now with all the news the rumors the in the windows the this the that people are hype hype and we got the Justice Con coming up, what, two weeks? Yep. Yeah. Maybe that Catholic announcement. I really... That, that the, the internet will explode if, if, if Ben Affleck announces it at Justice Con, which I think he would. I think he would. Why, why, why would we keep it? it I mean, like I said, you don't think he'd be having conversations with Zack Snyder, him, Momoa, and Gal, be, Gal Gadot? It might be better because... Like Robert Patterson's gonna have a lot of news during DC fandom. So if Ben Affleck does his announcement at Justice Con, it doesn't overshadow Robert Patterson. Right. Because if you if you announce it at DC fandom, no one's gonna give a fuck about Robert Patterson then. Because he has They a- don't. Well that's it, the problem. It, it, they don't. That depends though. It and, and that depends because A, there's a different fandom that's that's gonna be stoked about Patterson stuff, and it right. depends on how good that trailer looks. Yeah, like, they're stoked I mean, about Patterson because he does the indie stuff. These are people that follow his career. hundred percent. But it, it like you could have and I'm not saying that it wouldn't happen at Justice Con, but I'm just saying like if you do Ben day one at fandom oh well, it's only a one day event but if you do ben and then you release a, a, just an absolutely kick-ass trailer for the pattinson movie i think there's room for both because you gotta think how many great that's announcements fine. come out of comic-con you right on a daily basis when it's happening right that's, like, that, that's fine by me just yeah. as long as it's good and as long as it gets you revved up but my in my heart of hearts and it's nothing against patterson i'm not like i said i don't know him enough to hate him or whatever i'm just saying for what they did ben how dirty they did Zach, oh, yeah. how dirty they did Ray, for what they did to them. I want me, myself personally, for them to get the redemption arc that they deserve, especially Zach and Ben. Exactly. I agree. What about Ben's character? Yeah. Pardon? 
I was just going to say, close out Ben's character, finish that arc, and then Robert Pattinson, I will 100% get behind. Like, yeah, I'll get behind it if the movie's good, but, you know. Yeah, the, the only way that I think that the Batman trailer doesn't spark waves is if they modify the suit and it has nipples. Then, <laughs> then uh, you know, there's going to be issues. You know uh, what? There's, 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 a, there's a small the fetish for that, though. You might, you might be surprised. Somebody might, might come up there. Ooh. If you search if you <laughs> Pornhub, it's, it's there. But, um, you know, I'm just like... But I think, you know, outside of nipples, I think the Batman trailer will spark waves, and then you could still have Ben's announcement, and right. both would make everybody just lose their minds. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. yeah you're right, brother. Except for the haters, you know. I don't think we need a this summer with a lot going on right now with, like, the coronavirus and, you know, it's been a tough year, so it might be good to have, like, some of the announcements spread out. Yeah. Yeah. But they're gonna oh, yeah, have I, the I, fandom, the DC fandom things coming soon. I mean, yeah, well, and that's I mean, August, they, right? That's like August twenty. Yeah, yeah, it's it's still yeah, yeah, it's next month. So give us give us the Ben announcement. We can wait a whole month because, quite frankly, if Ben announcement comes and our head explodes, we're gonna have a good couple of weeks, maybe two, three weeks, to rub it in the hated face. You know, be on podcast partying. You know, have everybody just like, oh, boy, Ben Affleck. No, you wasn't. But you know what? You could come in and hang out with the cool kids now. Yeah. It's kind, of like, it's kind of like a concert, how when you organize your set list, you have to make it so that there's like, there's a good roller coaster of emotions, right? You have some quick songs, some slower ones, and, and fast ones again. And if you do it the way where if you do Ben Affleck's announcement at uh, Justice Con or even maybe before, and then you kind of have another month and then DC fandom and have the Batman trailer for Rob Pattinson, you hype it up yet again and give people that constant wave of like, you know, it's hype for Ben Affleck slowly starts to decrease because like, okay, we know what's happening and then bam, the Batman again and goes back up. I think that's be a really great way to do it and I it's think a good way to keep hype for too. DC. Yeah. That's right. That's right because you know damn well once that Ben Affleck announcement comes out everybody and their mama with a video editor said they gonna make their own Batman trailer get us even more hype. <laughs> Because, I mean, keep in mind, we're probably going to get that the Batman trailer at fandom. Right. Suicide Squad trailer at fandom. Ooh. Right. Or at least footage. Two secret movies that were on their questionnaire of what right. questions do you have? And they had secret movie one, secret movie two. I mean, right there, that's a shit Which is ton funny, because how can, you, how can you ask a question about a secret movie? The only question I can think of is, what is it? What is it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know. Well, I think maybe you could just ask questions that could scare you off. Is it directed by Joss Whedon? Uh, <laughs> well, shit, no, um, they said yes. No. No. We don't think that guy was forced to change it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. that was the, that's the wrong thing to say. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm of the mindset now that this it, it, there's no other place that we was already at the bottom. Now there's no place to go but up. And I and I really, really, I am so so happy and 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 grateful that we stuck that we stuck this out. We stuck right. this out for us to have the ability to have a roundtable discussion on things that we didn't think at one point we was even going to see. Because as far as Warner Brothers was concerned, they was going to make sure this shit was buried in the and in the darkest, deepest hole, so nobody won't know the grimy stuff that they was doing. But no, nope, low Warner Bros. is trying to hide. Warner Bros. is trying to hide this better than the the mother box of man was hidden in Justice oh, League. Exactly, <laughs> throwing the dirt on it and everything. That's okay, man. And then the MCU boys. <laughs> They teasing us. We go into the the thing. Release the Snyder Cut. They sitting up here like, yo, yo, check this out, man. What's going on? Yo, check this out. They they got the little picket sign. They they put the the boycott and shit. <laughs> what, what was it's good? They boycott, man. They boycott. Look what they doing. Release the Snyder Cut. You ain't gonna get no movie. What's wrong with you, man? Hey, hey, hey. Come here. Check out Infinity War. Yeah, we got Endgame coming up, man. Come on, be a Marvel fan. Don't worry about it. We got you. Yeah, yeah. Then we had to eat it. Then we got the billboards. Uh, 214 minutes? That shit is too fucking long. I'm never watching no 214 minute movie. You saw Lord of the Rings? That was more than 214. Well, anyway, I don't want to see no Zack Snyder. Yeah, and here we are. Look at us now. What we learned from the the Justice League uh, version is that he is terrible at hiding Christmas presents. Uh, <laughs> just like throws a shirt on it and it's like it's hidden, man. Oh and my God! You are throwing so much shade at this boy. I love it. 
I love it. <laughs> Keep going. And the sad part is, is I enjoyed the movie, and I still kind of do because it's characters I love so much in live action that I can't just outright hate it. I will still sit down and watch it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I love it. I, I, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm not even gonna bullshit y'all. I, I, I'm gonna like everything that's gonna happen. But what really gets me going? What really gets my goat? What really makes me mm, smell the hash browns in the morning? What really makes me feel good and proud to be a Zack Snyder fan? Is to see everybody all sad and like, I just said Ben Affleck was never coming back on my YouTube channel. I gotta erase all the videos before the Snyder boys get to my video and start cutting and pasting and putting me on blast. And then the other writers, damn, we just said Ben Ben Affleck will never come. He just announced he's gone. What the hell are we going to do? Here come the Snyder boys. Oh, geez. Now we got to hear the mouth for another two. Yeah, that's what gets me. Ooh, that makes me feel so good as an American. You know, like Randy Orton standing at the tongue buckle like this. I have returned. <laughs> and you have to eat it. You have to literally eat it. That's why John Campion shut his shit down. He said, I'm going away for a little while, and I don't know when I'll be back, but I will. Yeah, of course, because he would have to hear it from us. Ben Affleck, this, that one. No way to go for YouTubers that were shitting on us for two and three years. No way to go, but uh, hey. And like I said, you know, you know me, brother. You know me. You know I'm going to say a little something about all these, all these haters and these naysayers. And but I'm a, I'm a wait for a little while. Oh. But I'm, I'm still saying, but I, I'm a wait for a little bit. <laughs> I have no idea about DC fandom that they could do with sort of building in hype for past of Batman, but also bringing on. Uh, the excitement for Ben's return and Jeffrey coming in and putting on a bat suit and Michael Keaton coming in back. Michael Keaton they just looks so uh, badass in a bat suit again. He gonna look so badass. With uh, the character's history just saw bite sized chunks, bare bones, with all the actors talking in clips about their different uh, things they love about the character or their one brief experience they've had. With Ben, it's got to be something from BBS. We can't talk about the other stuff unless he wants to say something about Suicide Squad as well. Mm. But what I mean to say is that the actors talk about their experiences playing the character. They talk about what they love about the character. So Ben's mm-hmm. going to be all over that. Like, and then suddenly you see them together, standing uh, together. And that's the hashtag Batman, Batman United. Mm. And you see them just like Grant and Ezra's flashes. Uh, or each Superman character in crisis, but this time our character, at least actors all stand together as one character. They all love this character, and we are incredibly, we're going to be incredibly blessed with having four actors playing Batman Amen. at the same time. Amen. And if they, they don't have to be in costume, they can just be in a t shirt, jeans, a suit, whatever. Uh, as long as they're together and they're talking about it, and then the final shot is them standing together and saying each a line, uh, Batman United. That's or even we- better, even better, what yeah. if they all at the same time stood there and said, I'm Batman. Like, oh! all at the exact same time. How oh, 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 cool would that yeah. be? Oh, that would be awesome. That'd be great. Oh. Michael Keaton might get mad, though, because he still says that. Oh, yeah. He, he pretty much cornered that part. Yeah. yeah, he might get mad. Even I though, know, I, even though Christian, did Christian Bale say that same line? Batman Begins. He says that same line? I'm Batman? Yeah, he's like, when he's taking down the, th- the, th- the thugs, yeah. uh, Falcone thugs in the yeah. uh, warehouse or whatever. Yeah, he's like, who are the you? The docks. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's on the car. He's like, who are you? I'm Batman. And then That's like, it. Okay. Yeah. I knew somebody else from the Batman thing said something. So, okay. It was like your nod to Keaton. But obviously at that point, I, I think Keaton coming back to the role was like nobody's dream oh. except maybe mine alone yeah, at night I, when the lights are off. But, I was... uh, you know, <laughs> how great would the shirt be with like one third of the Bat logo as... You know, 
Uh, oh, oh. One middle part with Ben's, the other part with Pattinson. Oh, man, oh. don't get me so hyped, man. Now I just want this, and if I don't get it, I'm disappointed. Y I mean, you want to go ballistic? Me, I'm available. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, so I, mean, I, I, I can pretty creep. Hashtag Batman United. I'll you know I'll cut you in on the profits. Yeah, listen, <laughs> listening to the fans is gonna reap the best rewards. AT and T seen this from a mile away, and I'm so glad they stepped in. Them Warner Media, HBO Max, they basically telling Warner Brothers, take a back seat, man. We take we we handling this from this point on. And what they gonna do? They ain't gonna do nothing but say yes, sir. Uh, can I get paid? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Let's just keep this ball rolling. And I. That, right. Like I said, we all going to come out in droves for Zack Snyder's Justice League. Half of us already subscribed to HBO Max, myself oh, yeah. included. You know, I've already subscribed just as a thank you for you listening and, and, and giving the fans what they want. You know? Right. Yeah, and they do it so soon, though, because they just offer that sweet bundle of DC Universe. Yeah, yeah, and I, that's why I jumped on it, you know? But still, as a measure of thanks, that you care about us as fans to give us what we ask for, that we will pay our money for, then here you go. This is our money. This is what you deserve for not treating right. us like with simpletons so or not treating us like we we don't have you know our heroes that we would like to see on the screen and not the going to no weird weird progressiveness no no social justice warrior nonsense no you know what i'm saying not trying to preach to the people you know but just tell good stories man give us good stories never mind all of that oh diversity and that we like diversity and stuff but make it organic don't try to force feed that into our our myths and then give us garbage stories behind that give us what we know that we will enjoy as an audience regardless of your skin color and anything else give us something like that so we can all sit at the movie theater and be like yeah man this is some great stuff right here i love these characters and they're not thinking about skin not thinking about uh uh, uh what politics they on just give us something good and Zack snyder was doing just that and the, right. the on that tip the harley Quinn animated show does a good job with that oh yeah, yeah. Harley Quinn animation series way better than the movie yeah, yeah, that Birds of Prey was I, ugh. Uh, um, I would argue with you on that. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, so you like the Birds of Prey and the Emancipation of Harley Quinn? I love that movie. You uh, love Birds of Prey? I love Birds okay. of Prey. Okay. I want to give it to you, brother. You got a strong a constitution. My only issue is they fell into the trope of the 90 superheroes of killing the villain at the end. That was my uh, only issue because that was my issue with 89 Batman, Batman Return, like all these movies, you're killing mm -hmm. your villains at the end. You can't build off that. And and I liked you and McGregor chewing some scenery as Black Mass. I'm a oh, fan. So, was, you know, uh, so I, I wanted to see more of him. No, but, you know. To be fair, everybody got their own opinion. I couldn't stand it. And I only watched like maybe 25, 30 minutes of it. I was like, I'm out. Oh, see, that's your problem. <laughs> I can't. That's your problem. See, it's not a fully informed decision. Yeah. Like I said, you you watched it, brother. I I guess I have to. I stand corrected. I just didn't like. I just didn't like the the atmosphere and the little politics that I saw behind some of their behind some of their dialogue. But that's just me. And maybe I'm just you know wired to just see. Are you preaching to me or are you giving me a good story? And unfortunately, Disney fucked it up for me in terms of how you took something timeless and great and just made it, bastardized it to a level in which you don't even think of it as magic anymore. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that is like a, 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 a crime that can never be forgiven. So I'm hoping that with this, Zack Snyder, we are able to correct the mistakes that don't do what Disney do. Don't do what Disney do and think y'all so talented enough to not respect the source material. In Star Wars, it was George Lucas. That that man should have been your focal point, the, the guide and the maker to make your Star Wars movies the greatest ever. You didn't do that. Look what y'all got. Now y'all now y'all running to try to erase that shit because the fans revolted. And I, that's, that's pretty much my whole point. When the fans revolt, when the fans tell you we had enough, when the fans tell you that we gonna, we gonna tell you we had enough with our wallets and nobody's not getting paid nobody's not reaping anything you're losing money making movies you're going to be humbled by this panel 
and billions, hundreds of millions of people around the world that are fans of a, of, of a company and, and, a, and a, 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 um, a comic book uh, a company that gave us timeless stories that reached us out from our childhood. And now even though we're in our, in our uh, elder age, it still doesn't matter. It still resonates with us. And you choosing the wrong type of, of fandom or fan base to cater to that does not that will not give you the type of loyalty that the fans for 40 50 and maybe some of us maybe 60 plus years that gave to you to see our characters our heroes that we grew up with on the screen mm -hmm. they get they're, right. they're, they're, they're getting the message big big conglomerates is getting the message at least at and they 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 said we gonna do that for y'all and i love right. it Absolutely, I love it too. And guys, we've been at this for about uh, an hour and forty-five minutes. This has <laughs> been, uh, been a damn. They ain't even seen that long. We having so much fun. <laughs> I know it's been a fantastic discussion. I've really appreciated talking and getting to know all you guys. Uh, finally, getting to see Hugo face to face. Uh, Hugo's oh, yeah. one of my loyal subscribers, and I always appreciate talking with him. Bad Dan as well, and Abu Nas. It's always a great time talking to you. And Scott, uh, yeah, yeah. This is uh, what is this? this is the second time we got together? Second or third? Something it's like that. It probably might be the third. Probably it's might pending. be the third. We, we're probably on Fatal J stream at some point. Oh but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I. I lobbied to, to try to get in here, so that was. That, I, I'm just very thankful that you brought me in here the way you yeah. did, because I was thinking that damn, he's gonna have. God, wow, they got a high power caliber cast, man. I need to get in with that, you know, because I'm a fanboy. I'm like, yeah, I need to get in too, you know. So, I, hey, I got lucky. Now I'm rolling with the cool kids. Hey, for hooray for me. <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna team. We're gonna team up and have a Birds of Prey panel after that. Oh my god. Hey, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and Scotty was great to get to know you as well uh i will be sure to check out your podcast and before we close Please up do. i want everybody i want everybody to uh kind of uh let people know the viewers where we can find you whether it be just on twitter or on twitter and youtube or whatever have you so dan can you get us started yes yeah, so i'm my name's the same on both youtube and twitter at dan 530 530 i have a whole two videos on youtube one more i went skydiving just like batman and Another another video when I was in college drunk me criticizing Mark Guggenheim for Arrow, parodying <laughs> Flame Canada on South Park. I'm thinking of doing a YouTube channel soon. I'm work workshopping some names, but we'll we'll see. But for now, you can see Fat Dan Five Thirty on Twitter and two YouTube videos. Nice, awesome. All right, Scotty. Uh, cool. So as far as Twitter and Instagram and all that, Twitter is just at Scotty Mars, real simple. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, at the Scotty Mars Show, which is also the name of the podcast. As you can see, I took a lot of creative effort <laughs> into the name of the podcast. I was like, shit, got to nail this. Um, and uh, <laughs> so you can find that. That's everywhere. iTunes, Spotify. Uh, I do have a website as well, scottymarsmedia.com. Sounds really fancy. It's not. Um, <laughs> YouTube channel, Scotty Mars. Uh, I'll do in the car movie reviews when I get out of the theater when we can go back to the theater uh, so it's kind of an instant reaction on there uh, so reach out find me there and uh, I don't know hopefully I do some more of this stuff because this was fun nice. yeah it's a blast having you all right Abu oh man should I let Hugo go save me for last okay <laughs> Hugo go ahead okay <laughs> All right, you can find my uh, my official actors Facebook page. Uh, it is my name, Hugo Allen Stevens, A L Y N space P H and Stevens. Uh, Twitter, my username is the other Who fan. That's because uh, I'm a Doctor Who fan. And there's also another Facebook page I have, which is my film studio. I'm still trying to really get serious about it, called Soybird Studios. You can find that on Facebook. Uh, that's that's about it, unless you want to follow me on Vimeo, which is my name again. Uh, just an archive page about the previous film that I made up in special coverage. But that's where you can find me for now. All those places. Awesome. Awesome. All right, Abu, you made us wait with anticipation. What do you got for us? Is it because it's long? <laughs> do we have to play them off like the Oscars or something like that? <laughs> well, you won't have to, you know, send me out. Yeah, yeah with, the, the, with my three minutes is up. But it is going to take three minutes for me to say what I got to say. First of all, I am Abu Nas. Gentlemen, Abu Nas Prime on, on Twitter. Uh, I don't have Instagram. I'm a little too old for it. But, you know, that's my, my, my thinking. Um, but I am on Twitter. 
and I'm on YouTube as Abu Nas, and um, the, the show is called The High Ground. I'm, like I said, my bread and butter is Star Wars, but I do deep, you know, hold dive on, into hold on. You say your show's called The High Ground. Have you heard The High Ground song? No, I have not. Oh, you need to look up I Have the High Ground um, by Royish uh, Good Looks. You'll love it. Trust okay, me. Okay, anyway, you know what? Anyway. Uh, send me the DM on that. I'm, I'm yes. going to check it out. Well, I'm not biting off of him. I'm, I'm just saying I didn't know. So I'm just calling it my Obi-Wan high ground thing. But anyway, right. Star Wars is my bread and butter. But the DCEU is my favorite flavor of the month. And yes, I am here to give you all types of other news when they come up. But I am dedicated to this movement like no other. And I've been here since the beginning. When Fiona Zhang, the mother of my, our movement, came on the scene and said listen guys there's more to this than meets the eye and i've been on board ever since oh, so into the transformers universe yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> so i know that i i'm not everybody's cup of tea i'm a six-time twitter felon that means i am not to be messed with your feelings <laughs> and your your livelihood would get hurt messing with me but and other than that then you know that I'm a passionate individual that loves this fandom and I love my haters just as much and yes I know some of them are probably watching this podcast because you know you're going to have haters doing that watching the podcast seeing what we're seeing what we're saying what we're going to be doing and that's fine but I want you to understand that this is our time to shine this is where we as a fandom finally finally came together and put Zack Snyder back on the map and I know some of y'all hate it but that's not my problem that's not my problem or my issue but I'm going to show you exactly why because we are in the presence of Snyder's elite warriors <laughs> and then everybody else that's watching we're going to give you all exactly why we are not to be stopped so let's do it <laughs> Oh, let's do it, everybody. Now listen, on behalf of Hugo, on behalf of Scott, on behalf of my brother up there that I forgot your name. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. And my brother Nerdy over here. We're about to set the record straight on all haters, all the sycophants, the bootlickers, the butt kissers, uh, everybody that said it wasn't gonna come out. Oh, uh, Zack Snyder Justice League ain't real. Oh, uh, you got imaginary unicorns. Yeah, well, you know, check this out right here. Come on now. Let's go. Ah. Uh. <laughs> but you know what? Let me make a special let me make a special dedication to one person in particular that unfortunately unfortunately I have to I have to put to bed. Jody's corner. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry that you came to the conclusion that I hated you because I'm passionate about Zack Snyder's work and everything that you like I said, I don't care to know you. I just know that what you say about Zack Snyder fans, what you say about the DCEU and all the things that you, you, you put in your videos to disrespect us as fans over something that we love and we champions for is just completely unprofessional in every single way. So I'm going to say with a certainty, you can take a long walk off a short pier. Let's do it. Hip hop parade, the Snyder cut is back. We're getting what we want up in HBO Max. The mainstream media is having a heart attack. They don't know how to react, they need to fall back. Lord have mercy, cause you know how we rock. We bubbing that shit in, you begging us to stop. Nah, son, we gonna keep this up for a while. It's the victory tour, the Jackson Fire style. Y'all clowns spent three years running your mouth reckless. Laughing at the fans that Snyder disrespected. Okay, now the table's turned and you mad. Well, stay mad, bitch. I'm I'm not your dad, your mom, your grandmoms, or your pervy uncle. I'll smack the shit out you. You shake like a Funko. Ha, huh? you ass need to stop and go rock with the winning team. Cause we stays at the top. Cause I love when you stay mad. It makes me feel good about my life choices. Release the Snyder Cut is bad. You can't understand, that's why you're having a fit. HBO Max got a bag. 
You party it hard, it makes you feel so sick I love when you hoes stay mad It makes me feel good about my life choices Yo, what up, killer? Yo, what up, dog gorilla? Snyder Cut is coming, it's the thriller in Manila Yo, boy, I can't wait to get that food on my plate Not to mention all the suckers, it's here I rate I give a fuck about their feelings They take the L, we party it hard and live as well They spent years, years saying it don't exist you know, On Twitter, they running around like they the shit On YouTube, the video was getting all the clicks Saying Zach's Justice League is something they will miss Oh man, they promised to run the soul in the dirt Like Ben Affleck said, you see what promises is worth Can't be a still frowning Damn, Morel saw the light Collider still wanna fight They said don't believe the hype Jody's corner lost his shit You know he's in pain Well, you better get some help or go to fucking Jack LaLanne Yeah, I know Let's do it Huh I love when you all stay mad It makes me feel good about my life choices Release the side of cut is bad You can't understand, that's why you're having a fit HBO Max got a bag We're partying hard, it makes you feel so sick Yeah, I love when you all stay mad It makes me feel good about my life choices Yo, I heard Andy Sigmore sort of like too He was on Ryan's channel and he asked, are we cool? Only way to be cool, if you follow all the rules Disrespect the fans, we going Take you back to school Put you in detention Let you rock there forever Cause in our world Zack Snyder's the trendsetter Justice League suck But we got something better The real Justice League So come down here selector Zack was sincere In what he tried to do He really wanted us To give us something cool He didn't get a chance Warner Brothers act a fool We waited three years But our dream came true He got another chance To lock this shit down Prove to the world That the best That's in town Holla back baby Zack Snyder has returned the Haters out there get wrecked, feel the burn We got the multiverse back on the scene I'm so fucking happy I'm living the dream We got Michael Keaton back in the suit Let's get nuts and it's time to raise the roof What about the other rumors I heard on the net Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern back on the set That's the craziest rumor that I heard just yet But if he comes back, then you know he's gonna rep If Zack Snyder has his back, then we're gold The DCEU is straight in control Imaginary unicorns that's what I ride, I ride so hard, these hills go run and hide Shout out to everyone in the community At least the Snyder Cut is what we believe It's authentic in every way that you see To come with us, we gon' give you what you need Yeah, I love when you won't stay mad It makes me feel good about my life choices Like that Stay mad Stay mad at me Cause you know we here you're hating that bastards. Oh! Let's get out of here, y'all, before they come up here with the pitchfork, try to burn our house down and stuff. Are you talking about your neighbors? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> well I love done. so stay mad. Well, <laughs> they sitting on these screens. they sitting on these screens right now like, boom. Oh, look at Scanny Bastard wearing a Zack Snyder t-shirt. Mm-hmm. Screw Zack Snyder. Yeah, yeah, they'll take this to the grave, ladies and gentlemen. They will take this to the grave. They will take their hate to the grave. But that's okay, man. At least we'll be chilling in the cut with uh, uh, with Justice Khan, with the DC fandom. We'll, we'll be in there. Sorry for you Marvel kids, though. Y'all already had y'all time in the shine. Now it's our turn. <laughs> I don't know if I can even come close to following that up, um, but I, I mean, I'm just going <laughs> to, that was yeah, don't so try. good. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say like, you can find me at NIMW32 on Twitter, Instagram, you can find me on YouTube, Nerdy in many ways as well, Spotify and, and SoundCloud and everything as well as well as Anchor. Uh, we had the great Abu Nas Grace with a great rap once again. Thank you again, everybody to the panel. You guys were all fantastic guys to talk to. Look forward to talking with you guys more. And and with that, thanks so much. Everybody have a great day. Later. Bye.